Hi all, this is just a quick recap tutorial on how to record the drums using sonar in the studio. I'm going to talk you through what you need to do in terms of the controls and the inputs. Uh, apologies for the slightly joggy hand here on the, on the camera, I'm trying to operate the computer and the camera at the same time. Okay, so first things first, you need to make sure you label your tracks. So um, we're doing kick, snare, hi-hat, overhead left, overhead right. It's really important that you label them so that when you come back to it you can remember which ones are rich really quickly. Okay, so you're going to address them one by one when you're working with the desk. So you get the gain in the, um, from the microphone in the kick drum on the desk, and then you need to arm that track for recording. So we'll arm the kick drum for recording here. Uh, and as you can see, I've got all the properties and controls here. Now, that's because I've set this set setting to all. It defaults to custom, which is uh, quite annoying, unfortunately. But if you click all, then this gives you all the settings. And as you can see, we've got the input, and if you hover over it, the output. So the output to the master, that's absolutely fine but we want to change the uh, input to make sure that we've got the right channel. So we know the kick that is going into channel 1 on our mixing desk which is left 1 on our sound card okay? uh, and as you can see it goes left right stereo, left right stereo and just to recap on that, left is channel 1 in the desk, right is channel 2 on the mixing desk, stereo would be channel 1 and 2 on the mixing desk okay? so that will be channel 1, channel 2, channel 3 channel 4, channel 5, channel 6, etc. Okay? So you need to make sure that whatever tracks you've plugged into the mixing desk that they're set up on the right audio, the right input on the audio tracks. And so it's really important that you record and enable all your different tracks. Okay? And you go through one by one, making sure that they don't peak or distort when you get the, the level coming through into here, into Sonar. Okay? You need to make sure that the, the maximum level is just about there in the orange. Okay, so we can set all the inputs on all of our on our channels there. We need to make sure they're all in the right ones. Now here's a, a handy hint or tip. If we got rid of all of these audio tracks, I'm just going to select them all by dragging down the left hand side and delete those. If I input those five, five new audio tracks, when you input an audio track it defaults to have the input as, if we do it on track two here, as, as none in this case, okay? So if we start on track one and we know that we want it to go left one, right one, left two, left three, sorry, right three, so this one will be left one, right one, left three, right three, left five. If I select them all down the left hand side, so making sure that you've made that number darker, and if I click and select and drag down, what you can do is handily, you can change them all at the same time. So if you go to input, selected track input series, and then you'll get a dialog box and I'll just bring that dialog box into view so you've got left so you, sorry you're assigning this series of inputs so that's going to make it go left right left right left um, starting on whatever value you give it so we want to go from one on our desk so that'd be left one and so you can see we've got five audio tracks selected and it's going to go left right left right left right uh, so if I press OK you can see that this one's changed to left one the next ones change to right one. If I go down on track three, this one should be left three now. As you can see it says left three. Okay, so now we've set all of those automatically and then all we have to do is arm them for recording. Okay, so that's how you set up those tracks to record. Also remember that you've got your metronome control up here and if you want to hear it during recording you need to make sure it's in blue. So if I press record now, you can hear we've got a count in before the, the timer starts there. If you want to change that counting for whatever reason, if you right click on that button, that will bring up our preferences pane and our metronome control. And you can choose how long you want the counting or whether you don't want to count in at all. And you can do it in measures or beats. So if we did a two bar counting, okay, you can see that we've gone two bars there. Uh, before it started recording, and that's really good because it helps your drummer um, gauge the right tempo before they have to start playing. So it's really important to use a metronome. Okay, and so that's how to get started in Sonar.